Hey there, and welcome to another Travis Gafford vlog. This time I am talking about the Riot viewership numbers that are coming out for 2017. So first off, I apologize. I can't spend too much time going into all this stuff because, you know, I, I just got it somewhat recently and I'm about to go out to get dinner with my father. So we're going to go through them really quickly. Um, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things because the infograph that is out, uh, which I will link in the description, and for some reason it's too tall for me to be able to edit easily into this video, uh, has a lot of data on it. And maybe some of it is interesting to you guys, like how many, how Sneaky had the highest damage per minute at some point in time during Worlds, you know, during Worlds. But actually I just want to focus on the viewership numbers, which I find to be most interesting um, because they release these every year. Uh, so the big ones that everybody really cares about are... Uh, World Championships had 1.2 billion hours viewed over the whole course of Worlds. Uh, the peak viewership, uh, according, again, according to Riot, was 80 million. Uh, but unusually, you know, this always occurs during finals. This time it actually occurred during semifinals during SKT and RNG. We can talk about why that is in a second. And then, to and then interestingly, 57.6 million people uh, tuned in for finals. You might notice that there were more people at peak during semifinals uh, than there were for all of finals, which is uh, interesting indeed. So, because we only have the highest levels of production here at the Travis Gafford Esports Studio, uh, I wanted to uh, show you guys a brilliant little document that I made to compare this, right? Because this is just a, a notepad. Uh, because if you are thinking about the numbers that they show you in the infograph, you're probably really curious how they compare to last year. And here we see that there's actually some very interesting stuff that has happened. So first off, let's talk about MSI because MSI was revealed in this infograph. And I forget if they revealed it in 2017 or not so far, but MSI 2016, peak 6 million, average 2.3 million, unique daily impressions 202 million. And this is where you will start to see some interesting stuff. Riot is seemingly releasing kind of at their own whim different numbers, right? Because whenever you are comparing uh, any kind of information, you kind of want to compare across years and it's useful to have the same metrics involved. But if you look at MSI, we don't have in 2017 the peak viewership for what MSI 2017 was. Uh, and we also don't have the average impressions in fact the only thing we have are total unique viewers which is 364 so you can see that those are up by a significant amount from last year 202 to, to 364 that's a crazy jump by the way uh anybody that is producing things year over year would be super happy to see that kind of viewership jump but it is really strange by the way that we don't see the peak viewership or the average daily uh, viewers, or I think is average across the whole event, right? On average, normally 2.3 million were people people were watching in 2016 at any given time during MSA 2016. They don't have that in 2017. So it's just odd that they don't show that. And so you, maybe you think like, okay, well now all they want to go through is possibly, um, you know, these total unique viewers. But then later on, they show Rift Rivals numbers and they show peak concurrence and daily unique compressions here, but not here. So I don't, I don't really understand why that was, uh, why that was done. You know, like we see totally unique viewers here, but we don't see daily here. But then like those numbers come back here for Rift Rivals. So it just seems oddly selective. And I don't really understand the reasoning in doing, approaching it that way. Uh, but the story there is MSI is up by that one metric. And significantly up, by the way. It's worth, worth paying attention to. So the world's numbers are super fascinating this year because they have seemingly been supercharged by China, right? So if you remember last year, world's was in the U.S. and uh, you know not at optimal times for the Asian time zones. This time the world's was in China, which allows it to be pretty much within all the Asia time zone, which I... I don't know if any numbers have ever been released, but it's pretty obvious, by the way, that Asia is where the majority of the player base is. And so if you're airing content at primetime hours for that audience, guess what happens? I already told you the numbers for this year, but 
let's kind of compare these. So total viewed hours went from 370 million to 1.2 billion. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that there's like Worlds is longer this year because they added the play-in stage. But you could kind of assume that the play-in stage, which was the least popular part of Worlds, did not account for basically the numbers going bonkers, right? Like three three hundred seventy million to one point two billion. That is a, a crazy jump. Once again, we see a really weird thing that happens where, uh, in 2016, we saw total cumulative daily unique impressions, uh, which is basically what that is. Is they are taking the, the unique viewers from every day and adding them up to give you a mega number from the end of the event. And here we saw that it was 396 million. Uh, that is not shown this year, but you can kind of assume, or you can you can start to guess that like it would it should be up, right? Because uh, there's more days of worlds and viewership is way up on total viewed hours. And then what's interesting is okay, last year I kind of mentioned this before, peak finals viewership was 14.7 million. And so that was like the highest, presumably the highest point of Worlds. You had 14.7 million people watching it, right? All at once. This year, that didn't happen during finals. That happened during semifinals because it was the RNG versus SKT game. And uh, guess what is interesting about RNG versus SKT? They are from two different places and both wildly popular teams. Uh, so you have a lot of Chinese fans coming in and, and watching in their prime time to see, you know, their team has made it to the semifinals face off against SKT, the most popular team, or sorry, well, I shouldn't say maybe the most popular team, but the, the team with the most legacy, uh, that obviously had all these back to back wins. And so what that allows you to go to is go from the 14.7 million people watching all at once in finals to 80 million people watching all at once during semifinals. Fascinatingly, though, uh, <laughs> you had 80 million people watching all at once in semifinals. But if the infograph, if I'm interpreting it the correct, correct way, the use like peak viewership for finals, or, or sorry, peak viewership for semifinals was over the amount of people that com like entirely tuned into finals. Right in finals, you only had 57. I say only, but. 57.6 million people tuned in over the whole event, which is less than the the peak amount, the the highest number you saw during all of semifinals. So that's that's a fascinating number, by the way, and worth noting that we saw uh, finals unique viewers go from 43 million to 57.6 million. So more people, a significant amount more tuned into finals this year. So the big thing to pay attention to. Uh, as I'm clicking back and forth between Notepad and me, is that we ha we saw a huge jump in total viewed hours, right? Um, from here to here, I from 370 million to 1.2 billion, uh, again insane uh, number, and I think that really is just about China watching. Uh, some more questions, kind of about why Riot is not is not showing all the same numbers across all the different events and why they use different metrics here and there probably just picking cherry picking the stuff that makes them look the best i don't know um but that's kind of what we're seeing there and then i think uh also one thing to note is that the crazy numbers that we saw i'm very interested to see how right handles this next year because i feel like there's a good chance that because worlds is not in china next year presumably i mean what It'd be surprising, let's say, if they put it back to back in China, that we will see some numbers dip, uh, and we'll definitely see them dip if the viewership or sorry, the viewing hours are not as accessible to the Asian population, uh, the Asian audience, right? Because I think this is what we're saying: is you you go from North America, you have these types of views, and you go to Asia, they go way up, right? And, and maybe an indication that League is still on the up and up across the world uh, because maybe you have more people watching and you have more people uh, playing, uh, potentially. But definitely you saw more people watch Worlds this year. So uh, very interesting stuff. Um, would love to sort of talk to Riot more about these numbers and what happened there. And uh, they were able to give me this infographic ahead of time. 
uh, and I'm going to release this video basically when the I'm allowed to when the infographic goes live. Um, what often happens is I propose questions and this type of thing, and then they'll answer it in a blog post. I didn't know they were posting. So we'll see what happens when this video goes live. Maybe they've answered some of these questions already. But I just wanted to share uh, these numbers with you and kind of share my thoughts on them really quickly on my channel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoy my content, feel free to subscribe. Please do. That actually really helps me out a decent amount, uh, not just in getting people to come back, but also what it, it, right here. You know what? This is actually quite difficult. Yes, right here. Uh, there's a support page for me with the Patreon information and other cool things. So if you want to help support me, uh, you can do so there because Lord knows you're all running ad block. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.